I want to be like Spolstra and Popovich, Wade told the Sun-Times in May. I want to, but that's up to Michael Alter. I want to be an old man with white hair like Pop going bald, and people will say, that's the dude from the Chicago sky with a sandwich named after him. James Wade, you are a rat. Okay, I'm sorry about that. That's probably too much. No name calling. I don't like that. That's not fair. James Wade, you are displaying the behaviors of a rat and leaving your sinking ship. The ship that you built, no less. Now, if you are not aware, James Wade is leaving the Chicago sky mid-season to take an assistant job with the Toronto Raptors. Now, I am probably being too harsh. Everybody deserves a chance to get a better job if there's one on the table. But this one puts a bad taste in my mouth. And so far, most of the commentary I have seen on this has been relatively positive about James Wade. And I figured, what the hell? i got to crush this guy because I think this is not real good. I think I took this viewpoint when I saw this article by Elias Schuster and it made my blood boil when he announces that Wade's leaving and finishes the article with this. While this sounds like an awesome opportunity for Wade, who has worked his butt off to rise up the coaching ranks, this is undoubtedly a big blow for the sky. The organization is already trying to form a new identity after seeing the departure of practically its entire championship roster. Kalia Copper was one of the few remaining players from the title team, and Wade most recently built the team around her by adding well-known faces like Marina Mabry and Courtney Williams. Anyway, now all we can do is see how the sky can handle the news. Congrats to Wade on the new gig. The Raptors made a wise choice. Oh my God, this guy leaves halfway through the season And this supposed reporter is throwing well wishes at him. But it gets worse. And this is from the majority owner of the Sky, Michael Alters. We are thrilled that James can fulfill a lifelong dream to join the NBA. And we send him our warmest congratulations and best wishes. Now, Michael, Michael, I'm not looking for you to go Dan Gilbert and go Comic Sans. But my God, just a bit more, maybe some low-key hostility, something like we're disappointed that James Wade has chosen to leave the sky halfway through the season and will not live up to the contract extension that he recently signed. And I understand in the comments, you will say to me, you don't understand. James Wade brought Chicago a championship and changed the culture of the franchise for a brief period and has brought them the most success they ever had. That is true, but he is leaving behind a tire fire. Now, why would I say this? Well, it's because Chicago is currently 7-9 and nine, and they're in sixth place. But I think after he leaves, I could see them falling into the abyss. As the way they are constructed, they have to do everything right just to win, and he's he's a damn good coach. Have no doubt about that. He was 81 and 59 during his tenure, but without him, I think they will slowly fall back and go into the lottery. Now, maybe I am wrong. They've hired his replacement, and maybe the infrastructure that he has put in will keep them competitive and in the playoffs as only four teams miss out. But I think they are going to sink like a lead balloon. And why is this a big deal? Well, James Wade, the GM, had a brutal, brutal offseason. In fact, I might say he had a Derek Fisher-esque offseason. Like Fisher, he lost key free agents after the season as Vandersloot went to New York and Candace Parker went to the Aces for a minimum contract. Sound familiar? Then after that, he went into free agency to make up for his losses. He signed the injury-prone Isabella Harrison from Dallas. Okay, so it's not Liz Cambage, but again, it was not a good signing. It was always hopeful to see if she could ever stay healthy as she never did it at Dallas. And then on top of that, he decided to give up five draft picks, five draft picks, and give Marina Mabry over 200 k per season. 
Now, maybe I'm so angry about this because a few months ago, I did a video, God, thank God nobody watched it, saying what a genius Wade was as he could put together a team and find talent. And that is true. Nobody finds talent overseas or finds gems like James Wade. But he has now left and the big consequence is he gave up next year's number one draft pick as well. He swaps, or Dallas has swap rights with Chicago's number one draft pick in 2025. So the next two drafts, which could be pretty loaded with Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, Aaliyah Edwards, and so on and so on. Yeah, he just gave up those picks without any concern because I'm James Wade and I am going to go find people, and I am going to sign the free agents and make Chicago still relevant, which is fine if you stick, but then he decided to leave midway through the season. Now, I've gone back and watched some of the Sky press conferences with Wade, and you could see he's slowly losing his mind. So some of these clips, so this one is him. He wants to get it in there that the coaches are staying up late and how the players... You know, they need to appreciate all the work, you know. He, he tries to initially cover it by saying, you know, the cooks and the cleaners and everybody else and the players need to work harder. But he really wants to get in there that the coaches, you know, the assistant coach is staying up till 4 a.m. at night. Watch this. Like they have to understand what sacrifices people are making for them. You know, like people are getting off their job early, sending traffic to come and see them play. You know, uh, you got cooks that's coming and cooking stuff. You got uh, people that's cleaning up the gym. You got coaches that are staying up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, my assistant, my assistant coach, he has three kids and they love their daddy and they want to spend time. He's taking time away from them to get the team ready. So the least you could do is just play together. You know, that's the least. And so that's a little bit of the messaging. They're able, you know, they're able. Then there's this clip where he talks about team bonding. And I know he's joking, but talking about wanting to leave them in the escape room. This is classic. Done. We've done things, you know, team bonding stuff. We go uh, light a bonfire on Lake Michigan and wear our hula hoop stuff and sing Kumbaya and drink Harvey's favorite beer and stuff like that. So I think that stuff can help. I wanted to put them in an escape room, you know, and the last clue, just keep it. And they just be stuck there at a Tuesday or something like that and see how they like that. So maybe I'll do something like that. All right. Thanks, guys. We're going to be fine. And finally, this is the last press conference after they beat the Sparks on the 30th of June where he praises the players because he knows he's already leaving this sinking ship and saying, yeah, they're great, we're fine, everything's wonderful. And then a few days later, I'm out of here. Just, um, you know, um, believe in each other and believe in what you're doing. I think that's the thing. Um, uh, we have players that are really making strides to like integrate into our group and and could continue uh, communicating. Um, it's a special group, man. And, uh, like I, I've seen the way they stuck together after losses, and um, I just love the vibe and the energy of, uh, of those players in the locker room, and I love their their buy-in uh, to the entire coaching staff. And, um, you know, they're a special group, and I don't want them to be judged on the record or, you know, or anything like that. I just uh, – I, I just, I, I love those group of women. So it's really, it's really cool. Now, listen, he's not the first coach to leave the WNBA high and dry. Nikki Collin did that to go to Baylor just prior to the season. And the dream went on to have a horrific season where Courtney Williams got into it with Kennedy Carter and it was, uh, it was just a disaster. So he's not the first one to do this. One thing I do think, uh, I'm surprised they have replaced Wade with a male coach. I'm going to butcher his name. I assume it's Amir Vanderserver. So I probably got that wrong. But anyway, that's fine. Um, if I was a WNBA team, I would never hire a man to coach the WNBA. Oh, that's that's not... The two that are there, that's fine. <laughs> because with Kurt Miller, he's gay. And the WNBA 
that that's fine because you don't risk losing him to the NBA. I do not believe Kurt Miller will ever get an NBA job as I think the NBA is homophobic and they would never have a gay men's head coach. As well, the Washington situation with Eric Thibault is fine because his daddy is the GM, so he's not going anywhere. He's not going to leave his daddy high and dry. I don't know. You look at that. That's a bit of nepotism in my book. But anyway, so but I would always go with a female head coach because they will not go to the NBA. or They could take up an assistant job, but that's all that's on offer. It's clear that Wade wants to work his way up and try to get a head coaching gig and get more money and was quite comfortable leaving midway through the season because that was best for him. Anyway, leave your comments below. Do you think that's a jerk move by Wade leaving the team midseason? Or am I just being too harsh and you need to do what's best for you? As always, your poison is welcome. Good night.